Right, hello and welcome to this week's angling vlog. Today, you join me on the banks of the River Dane on a cold, crisp winter's day. So like most of the rivers, the River Dane has been a bit of a mess recently with the floods. As you can see behind me, the banks are brown with all the sediment that the river has been carrying. And I have been passing through on the odd occasion and nipping in just to see what it looks like and it's been boiling through. But today, it's got that calmness to it and more importantly, it's lost a bit of that colour. You can see the bottom in the margins and it looks perfect for trotting afloat. This river in summer does contain a lot of silvers, roach, dace, perch, but in winter it does seem like they disappear and chub are the main target and possibly dace if they're on the feed. Let's take a look at the side tray and the setup that we're going to be using today. So the rod that I'm going to be using today is my 12 to 14 foot Corum Glide got that teamed with a Corum Axis reel and on there they've got four pound four ounce float fish. The river is still carrying a tad bit of extra water so what I've gone with today is a dome top float and it's a 10 number four. What that will give me is the extra buoyancy and control of the river. I'll be able to hold back against the top thick part of that float and just edge that bait through the swim. I've got that down to a bulk of Dinsmore egg shots and with it being a sandy bottom it allows you just to bounce that bait through the swim. Two number six droppers on two pound one ounce bait of pearl on and a tiny size 20 Camazan animal hook. I have said it in other vlogs, this Corum Glide is made for the River Dane. It's got the finesse for them smaller fish, but when you're chub fishing, it's got that power behind it as well. I've been using it on a couple of sessions now and it is a rod that is made for this river so hopefully today we can get some chub on it let's have a look at the side tray and make a start so side tray for today got a couple of pints of red maggots some left over from another session and i picked up some fresh probably got around about three pints there of red maggot and i've got around a pint and a half of treasure particle hemp and tears the swim we've got a snag on our inside bank here the main bit of the flow, as you can see, is coming down round on a sweeping bend. The flow goes mainly like this today because there is a bit of extra flow on. I'm going to be putting my maggots round about there. So they're going down in a line. And then probably put my hemp where that tree's in the water. It's where I'd be expecting to get my bites. I don't think it's going to be easy today. I've made a bit of a late start. It's about half past nine. And I'm just going to start feeding the maggots into the swim. It's a cold, cold day today. It's maybe one, two degrees. So uh, I think they're going to take a while to come on. But just start feeding it and see how we do. So I'm just going to start the day by just feeding maggots into the swim. And for the first probably 10 minutes of the day, I'm just going to sit here and put maggots in and not trot the swim. While I'm doing that, there has been a few questions on the vlog recently about plumbing up. So I recorded a little bit this morning just on plumbing a swim. So I'll play that bit of video now. So recently on the vlog, there's been a few questions about plumbing up. Um, we're at the start of the session now and especially plumbing up on rivers. So what I've got, I've got me plummet, a nice heavy plummet on the end of the line. You want one that's gonna get to the bottom and stay on the bottom. And what I will do, I'll flick out at the head of the swim just to get the general depth and keep your finger on the spool and you're just looking for that float to be peeking out the top of the water. So when I flick in there, I know that we're about the depth of the river. The only two places on the swim I will plumb when I'm fishing the river is in front of me there and at the very end. So I'll flick right down the swim to where I'm expecting to get me bites. And you can see there the floats disappeared out of sight. What it tells me is, is that we've got shallower water at the start of the swim here, and it's going down to deeper as we go down there. All I'm interested in when I'm river fishing, doesn't matter whether it's a big river or a small river, I'm only interested in the gradient of the river. I'm not looking for deep holes, I'm not looking for anything like that. I just want to know what the general contour of the swim is. Is it going from deep to shallow or is it going from shallow like this one to a bit deeper water 
the rest in between you can work out as you fish but you want to know where you're starting and where you're finishing up so hopefully that bit of video there has helped the guys asking the questions about plumbing up and what i'll be doing on these first couple of trots is, is just working out the actual contours of the swim you want to be going from a to b without any obstacles in between so just trotting that float through the swim you can see it's gone straight the way down it's not clip bottom so what i'll begin to do now is adding just that bit more depth till i'm going down and i'm just trickling the bottom of the river that means when you hold back your bait will just flutter up in them bottom layers of the water and hopefully that's where them chub will be so we're about half an hour into the session now and just continuing to feed them maggots into the swim and not had so much as a tap yet or any signs of fish there was a cormorant on the water when we arrived which kind of gives away that there are some fish in the area when people ask me about the piking i always say the same thing look for the cormorants and you'll find where the fish are So there's the first chub of the day, halfway down the swim, the float buried and it's been like I say an hour coming but hopefully where there's one there could be more. Let's get this guy back and get another cast. So that, that chub returned and like I said it, it's been an hour of trotting without a bite. And in winter that's what it can be like with these chub you trot away and you've just got to hope that they come on they're not always just waiting for you sometimes you've just got to wait till they arrive in the swim they're a lovely winter's day to be on the river all the trees have got the the colors on them with that sun and a slightly smaller one but now there's two down there you'd be thinking there could be a few more job number two and just got to stick with it you know have the confidence that the fish will come and keep putting the magnets in every trot down and you just got to hope like there a shoal arrives these fish weren't here at the start but now it seems like there's one or two about so let's get this one straight back and get some more bait in the swim and after blogging that second chub just gone down the river again and we're into another and that's just how it can be these chub might not have been here at the start they probably were holding in one of the snags downstream but that stream of maggots going down you know we've managed to coax a few chub into the swim and almost certainly a chub given the fact it's come under my inside bank what you have to remember is the tackle that you're on you know we are on a light hook link and that tiny size 20 hook but if we take a time you know we can try and get them out once it's under your feet like that, just tiring it out, let the rod do the work and say, you have got the extra power in the rod. The danger is always going to be it trying to do you in this snag here and it will see it. Just a bit of side strain, just keep it in front of you. As soon as them lips come up for Mr. Chubb, it's normally game over. With the police helicopter out overhead, there's chub number three more than welcome and probably the best one so far definitely got that bit extra weight to it and just shows you've just got to stick with it keep putting the bait in and hope that they arrive
the sun down behind me that temperature really has dropped and it has been a tough afternoon on the bank after we had them three chub I did expect to get a few more but we are moving into that last hour and a half of the session now as you can see behind me the sun is just dropping down in the sky and it has gone really cold in fact it's been quite a cool day on the bank but what I'm going to talk about now really quickly is an app that I've found on my phone that I wanted to share with you guys it's an app that shows you all the river levels of all the rivers in the country I'll put a picture on the screen now of the what the app looks like it's a fantastic little app it's totally free to download so that app does contain a lot of information about all the river levels in the country but the most important thing is to actually get out on your venues and fish them without fishing your venues them numbers are literally just numbers on a chart when you get out at the different levels you can interpret that information and then when you look at the numbers it means something for example here today the river behind me i know can fish below 0.6 on the chart that i look at work that information out i've actually come to the river at times when it's been 0.8 one meter on the chart and that tells me what the limits are for fishing you use that information across a number of venues on a friday afternoon when i'm deciding where to go fishing you can then pick and choose the river that is probably going to produce the best results on the day for example here today i knew i was coming to a river that was in good condition for getting one or two chub whereas the other rivers are quite low one of the rivers that i fish on the ribble is quite low which would have been quite good for days today and that's how you can interpret the information in that app to decide where to go fishing but the most important thing is getting out there and fishing them venues and all different levels that way you can interpret that information and give you the best place to go fishing on the day so that app is a great tool um, for your fishing so be sure to check it out we're moving now into the last hour of the session and you know on the rivers at this time of year it, it is the time where you would expect if the fish are going to come back on it will be in the last hour that, that, we, that we're moving into now and <laughs> just talk that one up didn't I like I say in the last hour of the, the session this is when you would expect them chub to come back on the feed now I'm not 100% sure what this fish is it's bolted downstream twice I would think it's going to be a chub but that initial bolt I'm not sure I don't know whether we foul hooked him or something or he's just one that's got a bit more power to it does look like a chub how weird is that is the smallest chub of the day yet yeah. it didn't half didn't half bolt off at the start certainly a chub that's got more character about it it's not the biggest one of the day but it didn't half go we've got it on the GoPro I was just talking about the last hour being the time when we might pick up one more and the float buried a fish that plenty of power and certainly fought harder than the size of it but isn't that what we expect from these brassy chub a lovely fish so with that light fading just hooked into another chub right at the back of the swim you can see the rod just playing the fish and it's slowly just moving up that far bank this one so hopefully you can see it over there we know there's one or two snags over there so it's moving into the deeper channel in the middle and hopefully we can get it in so in the last hour of the day so many times these fish do come on and that's probably the best one of the day and it doesn't surprise me that it's come in the last hour i'm going to really quickly blog this one because hopefully there may be one or two more waiting for us in the last probably 15 20 minutes of the session but that's an excellent result let's get it straight back so showing how important it is to keep feeding you can see just how many maggots that chub has regurgitated in the net you know it's might have been picking them up for you know 30 or 40 yards below the swim and it's only in them last hours it's moved into the area 
you can just see just how much bait just one chub can eat right so the session comes to an end there now on these videos it's very hard to show you know how much effort has gone into that today on the vlog it'll look probably like fish after fish but an hour and a half to get a bite during that period you're constantly throwing your maggots in trotting down the swim time and time after again without the float going under and you're holding back every time hoping that float buries but that part of it is very hard to capture on the vlog but when you think about it it's five bites in about seven hours fishing so if you look at it that way you can see just how much effort has gone in hopefully the hints and tips in the video like you know plumbing the swim and that that app help you out in your fishing and if there is any more questions like that just pop them in the comments below and i'll do my best to answer them the final net of them five chub was more than welcome a good bend in the rod on a cold winter's day and a hard work for a net but an enjoyable one them days where it's not easy and you've got to work for every fish are the ones that i love the most all that remains is for me to wish you all tight lines in your own fishing be great if you could like and subscribe and I'll catch you on next week. Tight lines.